Hi, I'm Craig Tyriak, Vice President of Product Management and Scale Computing. In this video, we will be demonstrating the data protection suite built into HyperCore. HyperCore really is the operating system that powers the on-premises side of scale computing platform, and it's designed to eliminate the complexities of traditional virtualization architecture that, you know, if you think about it, it really involves a bunch of independent vendors, often different hypervisors, different server vendors, different shared storage vendors, different data recovery vendors. Now, the built-in HyperCore Data Protection Suite can protect your critical applications, your data, your workloads from disasters, whether that be small or large. And some of the key concepts and key features that we're going to be demonstrating here today include immutable snapshots with flexible scheduling and retention policies, as well as ransomware protection, recoveries of full VMs or workloads, virtual disks, and even file level and ob object level recovery, and then finally replication with failover and failback capabilities. Now here I am pointing to Fleet Manager, which is the tool we use within SC Platform for managing your fleet of HyperCore clusters. I'll log in here and we're going to focus on two of the clusters in my, my fleet here that are in my lab. The first one being a three-node cluster that I have you know, full high availability, rolling updates, all the great things you have in a multi-node cluster. And then I have this DR target, which is a single node system that I'm using as a replication target for failover if something happens to my primary cluster. So let me click into the HyperCore user interface and let's talk through the data protection suite. The very first thing that's worth calling out with the data protection suite is just built into HyperCore right off the bat is high availability. And we do that with a storage layer that we call Scribe, Scale Computing Reliable Independent Block Engine, which is an enterprise class clustered block storage layer that's really purpose built to be consumed by the KVM hypervisor that we include with HyperCore. The data placement of Scribe enables high availability, which is really the first line of defense around downtime. We, we make sure that if a node fails, whatever workloads are on that node still have access to the data, and we're able to restart those workloads somewhere else in the system. Beyond high availability, which there are other videos that go into more detail on just that piece alone, is the core of the data protection suite around snapshot technology. So let me filter down to this particular VM, the data protection suite VM, which is just what I've named this particular workload here for the sake of this demo. And you'll see that I've got a, a handful of snapshots already on this system. So the snapshot capability of HyperCore, it, you can think of it as a point in time snapshot of the virtual machine, the storage devices, the, the VM configuration, kind of a complete image of what that VM needs to be at that point in time for backup purposes. They're completely crash consistent and can be application consistent when used with technologies like VSS. And these snapshots occur nearly instantly with no impact really to the running production workloads, even with thousands of snapshots on the system. In fact, let's take the snapshot now. And you'll see, again, nearly instantaneously, this, this is going to queue it up, take the snapshot, the running workload is going to continue on alongside all the other workloads that I have in the environment. And you'll see that I have that available to me to clone from immediately. Uh, not only can I clone from that one, I can clone from others here in the list. They're all independent and they're all, you know, I can even delete certain things from this list. Uh, they're independent and they're able to have their own snapshots and their own snapshot schedules and their own retention policies associated with those particular workloads as well. Now, <clears throat> the next thing I really want to talk about. So one cool thing that we just showed off there with the snapshot technology is Let's say you are patch Tuesday comes around, you're applying a new patch, you have an issue and you need to promote an old snapshot. That's as simple as cloning that virtual machine, which I just showed here. You can start that up immediately. In fact, you can even put that on its, you know, basically disconnect it from the network or put it on its own VLAN if you wanted to do that to make sure that it didn't interfere with other things that you had running in the environment. Um, in the case of, say, ransomware, which we've had several customers that over the years have been you know, hit with ransomware, their number one line of protection against this is to promote a previous snapshot that's not infected. All of a sudden, you're back up and operational. If you need to go and recover things more granular than the entire VM itself, if you'll notice in the snapshot list here how I have these carrots on the side, you can actually pull down from this list the individual virtual disks and mount those either to this running virtual machine here or say to another one in the system. And you can go into that. It's completely immutable. This is going to stay as it is, but I can mount that somewhere else as a cloned version of it. And I can pull off whatever files that I need to, whether that's an individual file or an object or maybe just the entire virtual disk that I want to make available to something else. You'll see that's attached to this workload here. 
Now, of course, I, I've been talking a lot about manual snapshots. The same capability exists in a policy-driven manner, which is through schedules. So I can add a schedule, add a recurrence rule of, let's do a daily snapshot, and we'll do that every night at midnight, and we'll keep for, say, two days. And then I can set a different retention on the remote side if I want to do that. A lot of flexibility here where you can keep, say, a whole lot of snapshots locally and maybe one remotely, or maybe you just want one locally and you want everything else remotely for more of a um, kind of an archival state at the DR target. That's all fair game. You could also support things like a you know grandfather, father, son relationship, if you're familiar with that in the back of the world, uh, and setting you know, additional options here. Maybe you take a snapshot every Tuesday at 12.05, and I want to keep for two weeks on the primary site and maybe keep for one week, maybe even one day at the DR site. And then I save that. And then this policy can then be applied to my running workload. So here I'm, I've set to the replication default on this one. I can, of course, change that to the new schedule, schedule that we created here and update that. And Every snapshot going forward will now reflect the new policy of what is being asked of this uh, this workload. I somewhat innately talked about replication here, but let's let's explicitly talk about it. Um, you can set up on the same snapshot functionality a replication schedule to replicate a workload from one site to a second site to prevent any downtime from say a disaster that that prevents your entire cluster from being accessible, whether that's the cluster has gone offline from an actual natural disaster or some networking error and you need to fail over to a secondary site, that all becomes available through replication. So to do that, the first thing you have to do is set up a remote cluster and we can support many remote clusters. Every VM can replicate to another site and you can have all your VMs replicating to a whole bunch of different sites if you wanted to do that. And let me click into this site and you'll see that I've already replicated this data protection suite VM here, and it has the six snapshots already over here. We're gonna create a new replication schedule on a second workload, and you'll see what this looks like. So here, let's let's keep with the same, you know, snap daily midnight, or maybe the schedule that we just created here. And then I'll set up replication by just selecting this as the target and hitting replicate. And that will take a snapshot, it will look at the DR site to see if that snapshot exists. If it does not exist, it will compress that the data associated with the snapshot, the unique data, and send it over the wire to the secondary site. And then every subsequent snapshot that is taken based on this policy or even the manual snapshots that I take, it will compare those, much like you saw on the snapshot list here, the prior snapshot to the new snapshot recognize what is unique, what the change blocks are, that current differential between the first snapshot and the next one, the next one, the next one, and so on down the line. And we'll only send those change blocks over the wire to kind of minimize the impact of network overhead from the snapshots associated with this. Now let's go over to our DR site. You can see the, the data protection suite clone is already over here. Uh, at least the shell of that is, and it's replicating that initial snapshot over the wire right now. If you wanted to fail over, the process to do that is pretty simple. I can quickly clone everything on this site using the um, bulk actions feature here. Uh, I can even just look at those replication targets and clone those if I want to do that. And then I can power up everything at once on the secondary site and kind of get everything up and running all at the exact same time. And this minimizes the overhead of, of that failover time. If you wanted to script this, we have a full REST API, and we even have Ansible modules that can kind of help along in the, in the background if you wanted to, to script that uh, beyond just using the user interface here. But the technology underlying is going to be the same. It's going to be that you know, quick clone, very fast to be able to start up. I've got my running workloads over here at the secondary site. If I need to fail back, the process to do that is actually the exact same. I'm going to take these workloads, I'll replicate them back to the primary site. But instead of replicating every block, it looks at those changed blocks between snapshots, just like we did to replicate it to the secondary site here. And we'll say, do I already have these blocks at the primary site? If so, I'm not going to send the blocks again. It will only send those change blocks over associated with whatever live changes have been made at the secondary site during that disaster. So minimize the, the fail back time as well. 
So I think in this presentation today, we, we've covered a lot. One of the things I haven't talked about is that in addition to these features, HyperCore also supports exporting VMs to a local or even a cloud storage if you wanted to do that. And of course, you can augment this functionality with whatever third-party backup product you'd like to uh, within your environment. We work with every agent-based backup solution you can imagine, including Veeam, Commvault, and others. And we even have native integration with products like Acronis. So in the video today, we demonstrated some of the key features of the data protection suite, including showing exactly how HyperCore can protect your critical applications, your data, and your workloads. If you have additional questions, please do reach out to us at scalecomputing.com. Thank you.